So he's in California, and my guess was, of course he is. He has to go to Buffalo in a week, so that's why <laughs> he's from Scottsdale, Arizona. Or didn't you live there as a kid growing up, in Arizona? I did. I grew up in Arizona. You uh, and you have every reason to hate me. And I have, you know, I, I talked to you for about three seconds before I went out here. When you're in the middle of a national firestorm, uh, how do you not have bitterness toward media and people that seem? at least where you're at, to be turning against you. I mean, everybody was against Richie Incognito. Take me to that Take me to that psychology of what it's like to be that guy in this country. You know, it was very difficult. Um, being that guy and being thrown into the fire so fast, honestly, I just had to turn away from it. I mean, I couldn't read on the Internet. I couldn't watch TV. You know, everybody was bashing me. And at the time, I thought they were bashing me for something I did not do. I thought that it was unjustified. And I thought... You know, this isn't me. This isn't what I'm about. And uh, honestly, I sat in my apartment for days on end and just sat in silence. In, no, no TV, no. No TV. So it, it went down, you know, uh, things transpired in Miami. I was suspended. The next day, my mother flew into town, and uh, she went to go grab food. And I'm sitting in my apartment, and I, I couldn't read Pro Football Talk. I couldn't read ESPN. I couldn't read Yahoo because yeah. my name was everywhere. My yeah. name and my face was everywhere. Sure. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to turn on the Today Show. Turn on the Today Show and just tune out and relax. So I turn on the Today Show, and about 30 seconds into it, my face pops up. Oh, God. And everybody's talking about Richie Incognito, bullying, this, that. I turned off the TV, and I unplugged for the next several days. And I sat in the same chair in my house, in the corner of my house, in silence for hours, just thinking. And what were you thinking? Uh, a lot of stuff was going through my head. Uh, I was thinking my career was over. I was thinking, um, you know, I'm being misrepresented right now. Um, I was thinking a lot of things and, um, you know, really just kind of searching for answers at that point. And, uh, you know, you call? who do you call? Nobody. Your mom? Nobody. My mom was in town and that's all I needed. You know, um, it was, it was such a crazy, it got so hot, so fast. Oh, good Lord. I mean, it took off. Overnight. Overnight. And uh, deservedly so. And, um, you know, it was, uh, it, was a, it was a crazy time of reflection and, and just thinking. But, you know, at that point, I didn't know who the enemy was. Was it the Miami Dolphins? Was it the NFL? What, what was going on? I'm suspended. You know, what's going to be the outcome? And so just a lot of unanswered questions in my head. Uh, Richie Incognito joining us. Um, it, it, the resolution to a large degree is you're now a Pro Bowl level player. Uh, and Jonathan Martin, um, who I don't know much about, Stanford, you know, Stanford's a good program, good kids, has moved on with his life. D do you, after that situation, and I don't even know what I would do, do you eventually, a year later, two years later, even talk to Jonathan Martin? I mean, how does it land? What do you do? You know, uh, for me and Jonathan, our, our, our relationship ended that, that day, that week. Okay. You know, it was, it was completely over. Right. It was done. Um, but, you know, you, you learn from it. You move on. And, and it's, it, it takes, it was a very long process of getting over this and getting to where I'm at right now. And one of the biggest things for me, like you hit on before, I'm a, I'm a big, strong, tough guy yeah. is admitting that there was a problem and you were part of the problem. That's the biggest key. So you went to therapy. Oh, I, I did a ton of therapy, therapy, um, family, friends, many conversations. Um, and the, the biggest thing for me to get over was. You were the problem, own it, learn from it, make yourself a better person, and move on. And that first step of accepting it took months and months and months and months. But, Richie, your career, you're paid to be a tough guy. Mm -hmm. You are a tough guy. Um, so how do you reconcile the fact that you're still in a very violent profession? Is it hard? Flip switches on, flip them off. Because you seem like a very... Uh, uh, you're a very pleasing personality. Like you're you're engaging. You look me in the eye. You're not hiding from it. But you're in the most violent profession, <laughs> profession <laughs> sport. So how do you yeah. how do you reconcile that? How does it is it is it still a struggle? Like sometimes your coach says, "Hey, go be a bully, be a tough guy," mm -hmm. and then your therapist says, "Don't be a bully, don't be a tough guy." <laughs> right? How does it, how does it work? You know, I, I I think the tough guy is 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 always in there, and he's always lurking, and and that's the easy part for me. They, you know, that's that's like my primal instinct. Boom, tough guy attitude, play hard, work right. hard. Um, but it's taken a very long time for me to differentiate between the two. The lines have been blurred for most of my career between Richie Incognito, left guard, Buffalo Bills, toughest guy in the league, to Richie Incognito hanging in Hermosa Beach, 
being tough, wild, and reckless, right? So I've always had this wild child. I've always been out of control on and off the field. Yeah. And once I began therapy and, and really looking and, 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 and growing and, and figuring out what I want from life, that's when I was be able to differentiate between the two and flip the switch. And now um, on the field and in practice and when I'm in that football mode, it's, it's very easy for me to flip the switch. I'm almost zen-like on the field just, mm. just through so much interpersonal work that I've done. Um, you can ask some of my teammates. I mean, I'm cool as a cucumber on game day. Like nothing can rattle me. But then I'm going and chucking people around, and it, it's a controlled rage. Sure. And, uh, you know, I think that's what sets me apart from other players. Yeah. Richie Incognito joining us, two-time Pro Bowler. Um, now, the, the cynic will say, well, I mean, you're a good-looking guy. You're thinking about football afterwards. You probably want to be a broadcaster. Um, what do you say to the person that says, well, Richie, come on. This is – you're smart, articulate, good-looking guy. This is just an act to get back into uh, – do you have – by the way, do you have people like that? Are there fans? Do you get emails or tweets or social media that people doubt all the work you put in? Because you've clearly put in some work. Uh, well, thank you for acknowledging that I'm a good-looking you guy. Are a good looking I, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. I am comfortable you're, you're, with you're my mask. You're a good-looking well, good gentleman you. as well. But I've got more makeup on than uh, you know Matthew McConaughey in <laughs> those Lincoln car commercials. So me, me as well. But you know, yeah, of course, there's doubters, and I mean, especially social media. There's those are the loudest ones. You know, guys behind a keyboard can can zing you the worst. Yes, and it's hilarious. I, I find it hilarious because I would love to jump on a keyboard and zing them right back because I'm that type of personality. But uh, I take it all in stride and. You know, broadcasting for me, is it's always been a dream of mine. And um, I love the game of football, and I love sports so much. And uh, I think I'm a very good communicator, and I, yeah. I think I can can break it down for the fans and, and give them a, a, a kind of unique insight into the game uh, that's like no other. So people that doubt me, I, I would just hope that they would take me at face value and, and judge me on my work. Well, offensive linemen are like catchers in baseball. I've, I've argued, you know, I have an int- you, that you have to see the game differently. I've argued this. In my life, offensive line play has never been worse, and I'll explain why you're valuable. Is that when the new collective bargaining was negotiated, players saw it as a win to practice less. Mm -hmm. The downside is the one unit on the field that needs cohesion is the offensive line. So you draft a guy. I mean, you're a veteran now. Coaches are dying for you. Young guys come in, and there's limited OTAs. And it used to be a great first-round offensive lineman could start as a rookie. They're lost. I I had a coach tell me, he goes, they're lost until year three. Are you noticing that you're more valuable simply because the new CBA is hurting young O-linemen? I think the new CBA and the the limited practice time definitely has something to do with it. You know, guys would come in and they would develop for weeks and weeks and weeks um, under the old CBA. And you'd have a lot more hands-on time with guys. And when you're transitioning from college to the professional game, it's a completely different game. It, for an offensive lineman? For everybody, but especially an offensive lineman. Why? Because in, in college, you're, you're bigger, faster, stronger. You're a better athlete. You can just line up and run off the football and blow people up. Bulldoze and, them. And that's great. That's awesome. You can move people out of the way. But in the pros, we need you to hit this guy at a certain angle with your hat here, your hand here, <laughs> hit him now, turn him here, and the running back's going to read you. And, you know, there's, there's 11 other people or 10 other people on the field depending on you to do this right. And um, the, the biggest challenge for a young guy coming into the National Football League is, is mentally. It's not physically. I mean, these guys are gifted athletes. But you have to be able to digest the play, get the play in the huddle, hit the line of scrimmage, diagnose what the defense is doing, and then play with proper technique and keep all those things in mind in fractions of a second. And where young guys get into the, a problem is they hesitate and they're not thinking about, okay, I'm going to step with this foot, put my hat here and move this guy on an angle. They're thinking, oh, crap, set hut. Here we go. And they go back to their. They just need more reps. And the need, CBA they, they has eliminated reps. reps. Yes. Who's the best? How much do you bench? Uh, I bench 500 <laughs> pounds. <God. laughs> what do you bench, Colin? Not 500. <laughs> shy of that just shy. i work out every day and i don't even that's that's probably six sets for me okay so you're a very strong guy have you ever mono a mono you hit a guy in the nfl mm-hmm. and he moves you who's the strongest per you know they always talk about larry allen mm-hmm. the old dallas cowboy yep. guard they said could literally you know charles haley level guys were like uh, reggie white was like i don't want any part of him strongest player bang you've ever hit you have to be ray lewis 
Um, Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis. You outweigh him by 50 pounds. He smacked me once. Um, this was back when I was playing with the Rams, and uh, I had the reputation for being a dirty player and, and getting after people. And, you know, to be quite honest, we were terrible when I was with the Rams. We couldn't win. You know, we were 1-15, and 2-14. and 14. So I would go out and pick fights with everybody. I'd go out and just start <laughs> crap. You know, I was, I was bored. I was, I was frustrated with losing. And uh, I kept picking at Ray because I knew Ray was the best. And I kept, like, rib shot him and shoving him and uh, came out on a zone play, took a couple steps. My feet got tied up, and I was going down. And he came up, and he walloped me shoulder right on the helmet and that was the first time i've ever been hit so hard i got up and i was like that's a man that is a man right there <laughs> i want no part of that damian woody got hit by london fletcher mm -hmm. okay you know london fletcher L little guy short guy one of he, the he, he's a he's a powerful athlete damian woody who's 325 got hit so hard he went to the wrong bench <laughs> and he sat down and he just started looking around and a guy came up for washington and said big wood you're on the wrong sideline. So were you? Did you? Would you? Did you go, Richie? You in the? You're in the trenches. How many concussions you had? You know, I've been fortunate. I haven't had any. Wow. No concussions. John Lynch has never had one. You know, I think I think there's something to be said about about being the hammer. You know, there's the hammer and the nail. Either hit or be hit. And when you're constantly seeking out contact and initiating contact, uh, I think you it, have the leverage and the position of helmet. Right. Correct. You know, con uh, concussions. I mean, I'm not a concussion doctor, but some of them seem to be when you get hit on the side of the head, and you're not anticipating it. You know, when you're hitting somebody, your entire body's tensed up. Your nervous system is tense and you're ready to hit somebody. Um, so I think there's something to be said for, you know, being the aggressor and, and not and being fortunate enough to not get concussions. Knock on wood. Right. Well, good luck to you. Um, yeah, I, I, I was thinking this morning, I'm driving to work. I'm like, you know, Richie's probably ticked off, and I'm okay with that. You can, by the way, if you're mad at me, you'd say it. I'm, I'm Chris. I, I do have a bone to pick with you, though. Go ahead, and it comes from Twitter. I hear you're a Buffalo basher. I hear you're God. always on my Buffalo Bills. <laughs> I'm on Rex. <laughs> Why are you on my guy, Rex? Why are you on my guy, Rex? I'm not a guarantee guy. Okay. He's a guarantee guy. One of use guys, too. Uh, He's a little bit of a used guy. I like my players to be tough guys. Mm -hmm. I like my coaches to be a little more academic. I love Rex. I know Rex, all and, players and, do. And you know what? The biggest thing I could say about Rex is he's a lot different with the media than he is with us. How is he with you? He is straightforward, fun-loving. His spirit is infectious. Rex always has a smile on his face. And uh, Rex is a straight shooter. I played for a lot of coaches in this league that are scared of their own shadow. And Rex is definitely not that. And, um, you know, Rex does all the stuff in the media, and he takes a ton of heat. But what he does is he takes the heat off of us. You're talking about Rex. You're not talking about me. I like your personnel. I really actually like your personnel. We have personnel. a great team. No, we, have, we, we have a great squad. No, we, have, we have a very talented squad. Oh, no question. I am very excited to be back in Buffalo this year.